All right, the following presentation is going to be about learning objectives. Um, I want you to have the presentation open because I'm going to ask you to stop several times and do some stuff while I'm going through. All right, oops. So first thing I'm going to talk about is what are learning objectives and why write them. Um, basically, the reason we write learning objectives, learning objectives are, you know, what are my students actually going to do? Why do we write these? One, so we know what we're supposed to teach. Two, so we know how to assess our students. Very simple tells me what I'm going to teach. How do I assess my students? Components of an objective. Um, you guys can go through this slide. I'm not going to go through it. Um, but the components of an objective are four different things. Very easy to remember. A, B, C, D. Four things. Audience, behavior, condition, degree. Audience. Who, who, who are the learners? So the learners. Who is it? Behavior. What are they actually going to do? Are they going to describe? Are they going to identify? Um, think about what they're actually doing. When you say the word remember, can students really remember? What does that mean? Be more specific. Can they understand? Well, what does that mean? Are they describing? Are they identifying? Are they comparing and contrasting? Are they evaluating? Don't actually just come up with something. Um, next one, condition. Um, under what condition? So if I was going to give someone, tell students, students will be able to identify the 50 states, condition when given a map of the United States. Can they just identify them? Can they recall them? Can they identify them? Can they identify just the shape of the states? Just one state? Location? So it's when given a map. The degree, how well? Is it 100%? Is it with, you know, 80% comprehension? What is the degree? So A, B, C, D. All right. Um, basically, this is just some examples of what these can look like. Um, so you see that audience is in green, B behavior is red, condition is blue, and mastery is purple. Um, so why don't you guys stop here, take a minute, go through and read these, um, and just see some examples of what these look like. Don't pay attention just yet to cognitive, affective, and psychomotor when you see that. All right, writing objectives. What I'd like you guys each to do is stop the presentation here and take several minutes, maybe five to ten minutes, and try to write two to three learning objectives following A, B, C, D format. Go back and look at the previous slides if you need to. All right. In addition to learning objectives, we have something called learning domains. So there are three learning domains, cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. What does this mean? Cognitive means we're writing objectives for um, something we're going to think, like you know, identifying something on a map. Affective is more about emotions and beliefs. And psychomotor is skills. Think of like phys ed, like actually being able to do something. All right. Within each of these, we have learning taxonomies. The most common one, which you guys may or may not be familiar with, is Bloom's. Bloom's is the one used in education. If anyone asks you about learning taxonomies, no Bloom's taxonomy. That's the first thing you should think of. But keep in mind there are other taxonomies out there, and I actually prefer um, Merrill and Gagne's taxonomies over Bloom's. I just think it um, divides things up a little easier. What a learning taxonomy is, is it divides knowledge between high and low levels. So what does that mean? A low level is like a fact, something a fact, like a definition. High level would be like problem solving. The difference between the two, very high and low level tasks. Remembering a definition and being able to, you know, solve a, a very complicated problem um, are very two different types of tasks. And then you have everything in between. So I prefer facts, concepts, roles, procedures, and problem solving. Um, Blooms breaks it out even more, and that's fine. Um, I, I think it's when you're first starting out learning this, it's easiest just to say, is this high level or is this low level? Almost break it into two levels to start, and then slowly learn when things are different levels. So here's an example of how these work. Um, so we take, so this is Gagne's taxonomy right here, and you look at all these taxonomies like a pyramid. At the bottom, we have facts or discrimination. You have tons and tons of facts. Those facts form together to form concepts, which is the next thing. Those facts and concepts all merge together to create all these rules of how we use them. 
which and then you take everything and everything is used to form problems. So when we're teaching students something, the way we write our objectives is based on these taxonomies. I start out by teaching students all the facts they need to know because my end goal should be higher high high learning, that high level. I want students to be able to solve problems, think critically. That's our goal as a teacher. So, but before they can do that, they need to start from the very bottom. I need to teach them the facts. I need to teach them the concepts. And I need to teach them the rules and procedures required to actually solve the problem. So it's a great way to break up knowledge. Here's Bloom's Taxonomy. This is the older version. You can use the old or new. It doesn't really make a difference. As long as you're familiar with Bloom's Taxonomy, it consists of knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. You guys can pause the slide and take a look at what each of those are. Um, here are just uh, facts, concepts, rules, procedures, and problem solving. Here are some examples of the types of activities that you know would encompass each of these, like a fact. You, you have trivia games like Jeopardy. Concepts have students show examples versus non-examples. Rules, principles, design projects, prototypes, um, problem solving. This is where you have in like critical thinking, teamwork, discussion, case study, um, develop a game, that kind of thing. And finally, we end up with where we started. What I told you the purpose of an objective was. The purpose of an objective is to tell you how to what content you should develop and what your test should look like. So. If you look on the left of this chart that I have here, it's called an instructional congruency matrix. I have facts, concepts, rules, procedures, and problem solving. So let's take fact. I could write my objective. Students will be able to identify a state, you know, given a map with 100% accuracy. So what is my instructional strategy going to be? My instructional strategy is to give students some, I mean, whatever I want to actually do, but the premise is that I know whatever my strategy is, students are going to be seeing a map and they're going to learn how to identify the states. So how would I test my students? I know that I need to show them a map and they need to identify states. So you can see how it works right across. I should be able to look at someone's learning objectives and know exactly what their test looks like. If I look at a test and I see items on there that aren't in their objectives, I start to question that. Or if I look at their objectives and I say, why didn't you test this? That's also something. This is also a great way to, you know, really evaluate yourself as an educator. If students are all missing something on a test, you can ask yourself, did I teach this well enough? Um, maybe it was a test question problem or something of that nature, but, you know, you can use this chart to almost go back and do a little quality assessment of yourself. All right. Thank you.